everybody. Time to go milk the goats. In the spring, Kevin made me an automatic goat milker. And I used that on Rory, who is our oldest doe. Recently, I was asked why I'm hand milking, why I'm not using that automatic milker. And the reason is, I really just don't think that over time, the milker is the best thing for a goat. I think it affects their milk supply and um, and it shortens the length of time that they produce milk. So that's why I've spent a lot of time and effort getting these two ready to be milked and working with them. I think that hand milking is much more natural. I think it mimics the way the babies uh, suckle from them. We haven't had any decrease in milk production with these two, and this spring I would have been down a lot by using the automatic milker. The milker is great for when you have a goat that just will not let you milk her like Rory or in a situation like if I would have to go away to take care of you know one of my parents or something it gives Kevin an option to use to milk the goats. And I also I enjoy hand milking. We're expecting another winter storm to come through our area tonight, so it's gonna be another great soup night on the homestead. So I thought I'd show you guys an easy bread recipe. Uh, you're gonna be blown away at how easy this is. It turns out to be a nice, crunchy loaf of bread, perfect to go with soup, and it only takes a few minutes of prep time, a little bit of waiting time, and people are gonna think that you spent hours and hours making it. So let me show you. I've also made this for our farmer's market to take along and sell. And I can tell you this was a great seller at the farmer's market because it looks like a real artisan bread that you spent a lot of time making. Uh, we're gonna start with three cups of flour. You can use bread flour or all-purpose flour. Uh, we always use organic all-purpose flour. Now on our homestead, we don't eat any store-bought bread. So uh, everything we eat is homemade. So uh, that's why I like to have a number of different recipes to make because then you don't get sick of just having the same thing over and over and over. So we're gonna start with three cups of flour. Uh, we're gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And you can use either uh, uh, just the regular yeast or the fast yeast, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. We use the pink Himalayan salt, but you can use regular table salt if you would prefer. Uh, and that's it as far as dry ingredients go. Uh, I'm just going to whisk that together. So other than the dry ingredients, the only other thing is one and a half to one and three quarters cups of hot water. You want this to be a fairly sticky dough. Um, now you don't want boiling water, you want like hot tap water. I just let our tap water run as hot as it'll get and that's what I use. I just pour that in and again it should be a sticky consistency. I always start with one and a half cups. If that doesn't seem like enough, just add like a tablespoon more at a time until it's you know, a sticky consistency. What we're going to do now is really just let this dough rest. We're going to cover the bowl with plastic wrap and then we're going to let this rest just on the counter, just at room temperature for three hours. While the bread is rising, we're going to come outside and get a couple things done. Uh, we have a cold spell that's coming and so there are some things that we need to do to get ready for that. Uh, Specifically, we need to add more bedding uh, to a couple of the goat areas, and uh, so we're going to work on that now and uh, get those things done. <laughs> Now let's 
Let's go head down by the boys. we need to do before we go back in and check on the bread is we're gonna put some straw in with the rabbits. So let's go and uh, see how they're doing. You know our winters here in Missouri are pretty mild and we don't get very much snow at all so these rabbit tractors are still uh, appropriate for our rabbits. Now if you're in the upper Midwest or Canada where there's a big snow load I'm not sure that these would be sturdy enough uh, but you could probably make some modifications uh, to keep them in housing like this. All right, we're back in from doing our chores. It's been just a little over three hours since we started our bread. And so far, all it's been doing is sitting on the counter uh, while we were outside working. So uh, you, the bread has about doubled in size inside of the bowl. You can see that it looks fluffier. And so now all we're going to do is we're going to uh, use a dough scraper uh, if you don't have one, you can just use a spatula, but a dough scraper works best. And we're just going to put that onto a floured board. I get a lot of questions about my kneading board. Uh, all this is is a piece of oak plywood. Um, I bought this years and years ago. Uh, the thing with kneading boards is the more you use them, the better they get. That flour kind of gets worked in, and so it's nothing special. Just a piece of uh, good quality oak uh, wood. So... So what we're going to do now is just, again, use the dough scraper, and it's, it's a sticky dough. And we're just going to get it out of the bowl, onto that flour. Now we're going to use our, our dough scraper, but well, first we're going to add some flour to the top of the bread. Just sprinkle a little on top of the dough. And now we're going to use our dough scraper to just flip this. A few times in our flour. And we're just going to form it into a, into a ball. And that's really all you need to do. So we're going to take another bowl and a piece of parchment paper. And we're going to take our dough ball and just put it in like that. Now we're going to cover this with a towel and we're going to uh, preheat our oven. The uh, next thing that you need to do is preheat the oven to 450 degrees. Uh, but while it's preheating you have to have uh, a Dutch oven that will go inside to preheat with the oven. It's important that uh, the bread will bake in an already heated Dutch oven. So we'll put this at 450. And we'll put our Dutch oven inside. And then we're going to set a timer for 35 minutes. That's how long the bread needs to rest. And that's all we need to do until it's time to put the bread in the oven. All right, well the oven has been preheating for about 35 minutes. 
So we're going to go ahead and take the Dutch oven out. The Dutch oven is heated up to 450 degrees. So we're going to uh, go ahead and get the bread put in. Now you want to be careful not to burn yourself when you're doing this part. So we have our bread in the parchment paper. We're going to put the dough with the parchment paper into the Dutch oven. Then we're going to put our lid back on. And we're going to bake that in the Dutch oven with the lid on for 35 minutes. At that point we'll take it out, take the lid off, and bake it for about another 10 minutes with the lid off. That's it, we'll set a timer for 30 minutes and check on it then. Oh, and while this is baking, Sarah's got the soup started. She's gonna be making a black bean soup to go with the bread and it's gonna be amazing. So I'm starting off just with some vegetables. Onions, a bunch of different kinds of peppers, carrots, garlic, and some of the chili peppers that I grew in the garden. I'm uh, just softening them in a little bit of lard. I'm gonna start adding some other things. I'm going to add uh, one pint of diced tomatoes from the garden, one quart of poultry broth, and about four cups of already cooked black beans. I actually make the, made these black beans for a soup I made in a video from a couple days ago. And I still have more beans. <laughs> so they're going in the soup today, uh, and I'm just making black bean soup. It'll be really tasty. I've got some spices to go in there, some herbs, and then we'll just let that cook for a while. Right before we serve it, we'll blend it up with an immersion blender. It'll be so tasty. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Let's take our Dutch oven out and see how the bread looks. You can see the parchment paper is a little brown, but that's okay. Look at that. That is turning into a beautiful loaf of bread. So now we're going to put this back into the oven with the cover off, just to get it even a little more brown. Um, this, this step is really just watch it. Uh, it might take 10 minutes, it might take 5 minutes, it might take 15. Just keep an eye on it. This is already looking pretty brown, so I don't think it's going to take a whole lot longer. So I'm going to put it back in and I'm going to check it in 5 minutes. Alright, so I ended up leaving it in. It's been 8 minutes. And I think it's about perfect. Look at that loaf of bread. Go ahead and take it out. Now that is an awesome loaf of really crunchy bread that will be perfect with soup. You see what I mean about how it looks? It looks like you really know what you're doing and you don't really need to know what you're doing. It turns out perfect just every time. I've never had it not turn out well. So we're going to let this cool while Sarah finishes up the soup. And then we're going to slice it and get ready for dinner. The soup is done. I just have to blend it up. Now the spices I ended up using uh, was some uh, chili powder, cumin, coriander, a bay leaf. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, oregano. So it all went in here, some salt, <laughs> and now I'm gonna blend it up and hopefully it turns into this gorgeous black bean soup. Okay, that looks great. Now I didn't completely turn it into a liquid. We like it just a tiny bit chunky. 
uh, but I think it's gonna be fantastic with the bread that Kevin made. So we need to put this on the dinner table and uh, we need to slice up that bread because I am starving and I can't wait much longer for dinner. All right, so the bread's been cooling for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, no need to let it cool any longer. We're hungry and wanna eat dinner. So you can hear how nice and crunchy that bread is. Let's cut some and see how it's gonna look. So nice and crunchy on the outside, but super nice and fluffy, soft on the inside. Perfect. I'm gonna cut this all up, we'll take it over the table, and it's time for dinner. Well, it's finally time for dinner. Uh, just the three of us tonight. Our oldest daughter is playing in the band at a basketball game tonight. So we're gonna dig in. The soup looks amazing, the bread. You can't beat fresh, homemade bread. Um, you guys, I hope you try this recipe. It's so easy. Uh, again, it's one of those things that just will impress people when they come over because they'll think that you're a real artisan baker and you don't need to be. So if you enjoyed this, I hope that you will hit the subscribe button before you leave. Uh, if you uh, know someone who would enjoy this, share this on all your social media. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.